Hi, I'm Sean with Backflow Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. It's mid-October and many of you have already turned off your sprinkler systems and, and winterized your backflow assembly. If you haven't, you better get out there and do it real quick. But this video tonight is specifically about the Wilkins 375. That's the one with the plastic housing. You need to get these taken care of sooner than later because they don't stand up to a light freeze. You'll get cracks inside that housing. So what I want to show you today is how you do that. It's really easy. Once you turn off your, your source of water to your backflow into your sprinkler system, open up these screwdriver slots on the side of these test cocks. That'll drain most of the water out of the vessel. Then take a Phillips screwdriver and undo these two screws that are in the wedge. Many people think they have to undo these four bolts on the supports on the side, and you don't. That's a lot of work and time consuming. All you have to do is these two screws. Now they also, you'll notice that in between these two screws is a place that looks like a screw is missing. That's designed for you to be able to put one of these screws into that and then I guess use a, a wrench or a pair of pliers to kind of wiggle that out. But I prefer just to take a flathead screwdriver and put it on the back side of the wedge and lift it up and out. It's a lot easier. Then you'll take the vessel and you'll slide it towards the inlet side of the assembly and it lifts up and out. It's that easy. Then you'll want to put this inside your house or in a heated garage, especially if you have not drained the water out. Um, then if you want, that's all you need to do. I would then turn your shutoff valves to a 45 with the handles. That's leaving the ball valve part way open. There, there's a ball inside of each of these valves. If it's all the way open or all the way shut, it traps water on the side of the ball and that tends to be where you'll get the cracks during the winter. Um, but leaving it part way open leaves room for the water to expand around both sides of that ball to that open end. But Wilkins has designed what's called a blowout fitting to put in there that you can uh, blow out your sprinkler system with. And it also has another purpose. It's a dual purpose fitting. You can use it to flush out your line before you put your vessel back in. So this is helpful when you're just doing a new install or if you had to do repairs on your pipe ahead of the backflow assembly. You'd put this in place, hook a hose up to this, move it away from where you're working, turn the water on and let it flush out for a few minutes to get that debris out. But in this case, we're gonna be using it for winterizing your sprinkler system. Inside of this assembly, there's a little lip on the outlet ball valve and on this sleeve where the bottom of this will nestle on both sides. So you'll stick it in, nestle it up to the outlet side, and I'm sorry, normally there's an O-ring on both sides of this. I didn't put those on for this video. You'll nestle that up, you'll take your wedge and use that to slide your sleeve up to the blowout fitting, and then you just snug tighten these screws. And I alternate tightening those. You don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to use any more than just finger pressure. You don't want to really use your hand and crank down. Then you connect your air compressor fittings to this. Make sure that your ball valve is fully open and blow out your, your sprinkler system. Then you can leave this in if you want for the winter or you can take it out as well. Um, but then turn your handle to a 45 and you're good to go. Now because we're to this point, I'm going to show you how you put the vessel back in for the spring. You will just undo these two screws again, lift up the wedge, slide the blowout fitting to the inlet side up and out, get your vessel and make sure that the o-rings are still there and put a little bit of lube on both o-rings. You will then nestle the outlet side of the vessel on that lip and then you'll take your wedge and slide it over to the inlet side. You just kind of wiggle things around make sure everything's lined up and then again alternate tightening these two screws. Finger tight, don't over tighten. Once one screw gets tight then go to the other side. When that gets tight go to the other one and by doing this you'll get it just right, you won't over tighten it. 
if you over tighten it then it causes the o-rings not to be pressed against the, where they're supposed to be sealing and you'll get little drips on both sides of that if that happens you just loosen it realign things and snug it down again and that's all you need to do now I want to show you what happens and I, and I hope this shows up in a video these are the just the plastic sleeve or the plastic vessel no internals or anything of ones that people have left with me that have froze and cracked so this is what it looks like brand new and if you turn this on in the spring for example and you start getting a spray coming out of the side or you've got a drip that looks like it's coming off of the bottom here right underneath the relief valve and there's a, a seam where the relief valve cover is attached to the body and my theory is that it's leaking here and it just runs down that seam and then off so oftentimes people think it's the diaphragm that's leaking but it's not it's a crack that's inside and let's see if one of these is better than another and I don't know if you'll be able to see it I'm gonna try and put a, a video a picture of it in here there's a crack that writes run, runs right down the center line of the housing and it goes right down the relief valve hole you'll also see another indication is it's dripping out of here and that may or may not stop when you turn a zone on um, so it may be kind of misleading as to what's going on but the best thing to do is to pop the checks out of this vessel and take a look right down the center line and see if there's a crack I hope this video has been helpful if you have questions or comments please do so below or you can call me or email me that information is going to be on the end of this video uh, if you haven't subscribed please do so and click the notification button so you are notified every time there's a new video thank you for taking the time to watch have a good day